Hey there, this video is all about wedges. More specifically, it's all the things that I wish I would have known before I got started. There's the Earth, and the Earth's axis, and the equator. The Earth spins around its axis, and at the most northern tip of that axis is Santa's workshop. I mean true north. And there's magnetic north. We don't use that. Let's erase it. By definition, the equator runs perpendicular to the axis. And those other lines parallel to the equator, well, those are latitudes. You might know yours. Now let's say that's you right there. That line of longitude that runs from you directly south is called the meridian. And that other line, the extension of the equator all the way out into space, that's the celestial equator. That's important. There is a scope that's pointed at the celestial equator and the meridian. Now here's the Earth again. We've rotated it. There's no we. It's me. I rotated it. So true north is straight up. Here's a telescope on an Alt-EZ mount. Alt-EZ, altitude azimuth. Here's the same scope sitting on a wedge. See the difference? Now, the wedge sits on an angle. If you look at flat, that's zero. Straight up, 90 degrees. If the wedge points at 90 degrees, you're at the equator. If it points at zero, you're at the North Pole. Some wedges are reversed. We'll get to that. Here's what that looks like. At the equator, your wedge is at 90 degrees. You're pointed towards the celestial equator. At the North Pole, hi Santa, your wedge is pointed at zero and straight out to the celestial equator. And when you're somewhere in between, say at the 20th latitude, that would be 20 degrees north, then your wedge should be pointing at the celestial equator. Now what would that angle be? Well, it depends. If you're setting it from the base of your mount, then it would be the complementary angle, or 70. That is, if you're measuring it from the base of your mount. Now, not all wedges are created equal, and Celestron likes to mark their wedges the other way. So, instead of having zero degrees be at the base, they set zero straight at the very top. And the furthest south marking is 70, denoting how far down the scope can go. Meaning, instead of measuring the angle, or the complementary angle, from the base of the scope, you can just set to the marker that represents your latitude directly. So, if you're at the 20th latitude, set your wedge to 20 degrees. If you have a homemade wedge and you're measuring the angle from your base, use the complementary angle. That's me, right there. Maybe. There's true north. And there's the Earth spinning around its axis. If you extend that axis, you'd be pointing in the general vicinity of Polaris, which isn't exactly at true north, but somewhere around it. If you use a polar scope, you can see where Polaris should lie in your reticle. Then again, if you're using a polar scope, then you probably have an equatorial mount, and none of this really matters to you. So what are the steps to properly setting up your wedge? I'll give you a hint. We're going to be missing one. Step one, set up your tripod so that the leg of the tripod, uh, if you're using a Celestron mount, that would be the leg that's marked Celestron, points north. Two, set your wedge angle according to your latitude. Number three, point your OTA, that's your scope, at the south meridian, also known as just the meridian, and set it parallel to your base. 
it should be perpendicular to your fork arm and parallel to the base. How level should your scope be? I used to go to extreme lengths, as you can see. With boards and shims, I'd spent a long time trying to level my scope. Turns out, I don't really have to. But there is one type of leveling which we should look at. First, let's find out why we don't really have to level all as much as we think. So there's your scope. It's not, it's not level at all. What matters is that the wedge plane and the plane of rotation around which your scope is going to go around is going to be perpendicular to the Earth's axis. That's really what we're looking for. Because at the end of the day, your scope is going to counteract the motion of the Earth in order to track the stars. But let's see what happens if your mount is not parallel to the ground. Here we've got the mount that's sloping by 7 degrees. If you're at latitude 20, well, you change the angle of your scope or your declination by adding 7 degrees. You don't have to remember that. It happens naturally when you align. Now here I'm assuming that you're using some sort of software on a guiding laptop or guiding PC in order to align your scope. With this type of software, what you would normally do is a basic alignment, which would create a pointing model. And then with software like CPWI from Celestron, you would have the option to do an all-star polar alignment, which then determines how much you're off to where the stars should be had your mount been properly aligned. And that is where you use your adjustment knobs to reposition your mount physically. And this is the adjustments we're talking about here. For fine-tuning, you have an option of using something like PHD2 guiding to do what is called a drift alignment, which allows you to see which way the stars are trailing and make even finer adjustments accordingly. Basically, if your scope is off east and west, you compensate with your azimuth adjustment knobs during alignment. If you're off up and down, then you compensate with the declination or altitude. Here's a problem though. What if you're off in rotation side to side? Let's look at this example. You can move your scope in three axes, X, Y, and Z. X would be left and right, and you can do that with the azimuth adjustments. Y would be up and down with your declination or altitude adjustments, but the Z axis would be rotating the scope left and right, for which there is no adjustment. So in this case, you can lower the altitude and you can shift your scope left and right with azimuth, but you won't be able to rotate the scope into the right position. And your mount's right ascension and declination drives won't help because they're meant to position your mount to track a star. So you do have to level your mount with a level before you start. Let's adjust our steps. One. Point your tripod so that one leg points north. Two, level your mount side to side with level. Three, set your wedge angle based on your latitude. Four, point your OTA south at the meridian. Five, perform an alignment. I'll leave a link to my polar alignment video at the end of this video. Thanks for watching and clear skies.